Welcome back to another episode and today we're going to be aligning our feet with the angled slopes. As you can see, our feet are doing their best to align with the slopes that we have. So our ankles are now bending to based on the surface. So let's get started. So once again, time to dive into our rig setup. So here is our setup and well, let's first we need to figure out the slope of the surface that we are standing on. So we need to go ahead and store that value. So let's create a new variable for that. And I'm going to call mine foot normal underscore L. And this one is going to be a vector type because well, it's going to hold three values X, Y, Z. Then, of course, duplicate this and make this into a right foot variable as well, because obviously uh, each foot might have different surfaces. OK, so let's set these values up and we can actually set it up really easily because we have already our sphere trace up and ready to go. So it's going to return us what is the angle of the slope that we are standing on. So let's just go ahead and set the variable. So connect to the execution and connect the hit normal to the value and the same goes for the right foot as well there we go all hooked up and ready to go now we need to put these values into action so what i will do is create another sequence once more because we have already a lot of things going on and we want to keep these somewhat separated so we understand what's going on inside of which section at least for the most part so from the last route, I'm actually going to do another sequence. And then at the very end, so the D route is going to go ahead and use the full body IK node, set all of that final positioning stuff up for us. We're going to move it down below a little bit. And from the A route, what we are going to do is we're going to go ahead and set a rotation for our control. So let's start with the left foot. So let's grab our IK foot left and let's go ahead and set the rotation for this control. But if you remember that our trace is actually going from higher above till way below our foot. So it might hit the ground even if the foot is not entirely on the ground. So we're going to need a couple of conditions in order for uh, so that this get, doesn't get ran unless we actually are touching the ground. Now for now. I'm going to do an a branch. So I'm going to look for a if branch execution. And only on the true route, I'm going to go ahead and proceed with the code. Now, for now, we only have one condition, which is if the foot has hit the ground. So we're going to use that one for now. And we're going to add another condition later on to make sure that our foot is actually on the ground. Uh, but we're going to do this a little bit later. I'm going to show you why we need it and what are the issues. And we're going to take it a little slower. So maybe make some a little bit more sense. Now to achieve the rotation, because now we need to provide a rotation, we can use a node called aim math. From this, we can split the result and use whatever rotation that we calculate at the end of this. Now I'm going to be completely honest with you. I don't understand this node fully as of yet. There isn't a lot of documentation or information in general about this, uh, but I've done some experimenting. I made this work. Uh, and I will do my best to try and explain this. So we have two axes. We have the primary and the secondary axis. The primary axis is basically uh, where you want the, in this case, the controls to be pointed at, in which direction they should be aimed at. And the secondary axis is the up, up axis in uh, which the control should be facing upwards, basically. Now for the... That's for the axis. Now for the targets, the target is the surface and we already have that from the, the foot normal. So we can grab that and go ahead and plug that into the target. Now we need to figure out which axis we want to use. Now for the primary, uh, this actually stays at default. This gets used for the X axis because if we select our control, you can see that the X axis is upwards and that is how we want to rotate it. So we're going to be using X axis for the primary. Now for the secondary, 
for the axis, we're going to be using the Y axis instead of the Z. We don't want to use Z. Uh, we want it to be bending this way and also like up and downwards. Now for the target, uh, again, we could use the same thing, but I'm going to show you we're going to have a couple of issues with it and therefore I ended up setting my values basically like hard coded in a way uh, because for some reason the other foot just doesn't work the same I think it's because of the way skele the skeleton is set up that it's the other way around even though I tried and uh, reversing the values I still can't get it to work the same way um, okay, so that's for one of the feet. Let's go ahead and let's set the same thing up for the other one. So I'm just going to copy and paste the whole thing. Grab the B route. Or, yeah, let's grab the B route. Plug it in like so. So that's fine. And let's set up the, the thing. So we have the hit L. Replace that with the hit R. We have the foot L control, we want to use the right control and for the normal value we want to use the foot normal right value. Now we want to make some slight changes because well this is the other foot and like I mentioned these are flipped around the other way around. Uh, the axes are pointing in the same uh, in the same axis but they are flipped around so what was positive now is negative except for the Z axis. So if it's 1, then that means that it has to be minus 1 in the x, and same goes for the y. If it was 1, then it's going to be minus 1 in this case. So we have this all set up, so let's give it a shot. And here is the issue that I mentioned with one of the foot if we use the normal uh, for the secondary target. You can see that that foot is always facing the other way around, and even if I try and inverse the values, uh, they seem, seem to still be doing the same thing. So whatever I do, they do the same thing. But you can see now at least they do align with the ground the way they should be. But well, <laughs> one of the foot, foots is looking the other way around. So what I basically ended up doing was disconnecting the secondary target and just basically hard coding the value in. So the target X is zero because we are manipulating the Y axis in this case. We can see that up here. That we are using the y-axis so we're gonna say that the up uh, ac uh, the target axis also has to be the y-axis so we're gonna pro provide a one over here and we could do the same thing for the left foot as well to keep it consistent so since we are in the y-axis x is gonna be zero and the y is gonna be one so that's to basically keep it somewhat consistent throughout our code and now as you can see it's normal the way it should be and as you can see our feet are already aligning with the ground pretty much the way they should be is doing the control rig is doing its best to align if you wanted the animation to be a little quicker you can obviously speed up the accumulated lerp type times make them a little lower and therefore the character is going to align a little bit quicker because now we can see the motion and floating and going into the ground a little bit but we could make that a little bit faster now we have an issue though whenever we run look at the ankles how they are snapping in a way they are trying to align with the feet as long as they can as long as there is a hit on the ground and we want to go ahead and eliminate that so that as soon as we lift the foot up so that it would stop trying to adjust itself and to do so, we need to calculate the distance between the foot and the ground. And since we have a sphere trace over here which tries to hit the ground, we can do the calculations from over here. So let's go ahead and do that. So first, obviously, we will need to store these values. So let's create variables for them. And let's say foot distance underscore L, which is going to be a float value. And then we're going to have another one for the right foot as well. So let's first up set up the left foot. So we're going to set the value, connect the execution. And let me move this down just a slightly bit. And so what we are going to do is we're going to grab the location of the control. We're going to grab this guy and we're going to do a distance between two vectors. So basically the distance between the foot, so the control, 
and the hit location. And that's going to be our return value. We're going to do exactly the same thing down below as well for the right foot. So we're going to do controls location and a distance between the foot and the location where the hit has happened from the sphere trace. Now, this is all good, but still a couple of issues. Now we need to figure out the distance between uh, what would be the distance when we actually do take an effect in this whole thing. Because if we're going to be standing on, on a slope, so let me just actually use a mannequin for this. So if we grab mesh, bring it over here. So if we bring him the other way around, we need to think about the fact that he can be standing like this. So therefore there is still a little bit of a free space since we are doing a sphere trace from the ankle. We always need to think about the heel. So what would be the distance between the ground and the heel? So we need to add those values in between as well. And also we got to keep in mind that we are doing the distance between the ankle and the hit position. So we got to put this value inside of the equation as well. And we can find that value actually pretty easily. So if we would select one of our foot controls and look at the details, uh, we can see that the location is minus 17. So that means that till the ground position, it is roughly 17 units to hit the ground. So we can see that. Now, so that's going to be 17 units plus the location where our heel might be higher up a bit. So from my testing, what I noticed that the best values are like 25 to 30. Uh, totally based on the slopes that you might be facing. The bigger slopes you might be facing, the maybe higher that number should be. But then remember, the higher you go, the bigger the chances are that your ankles are going to start to snap like they are basically doing right now. So we're going to grab our left foot distance, we're going to get this value and we're going to check if it is less or equal to let's say 30. And we're going to do a AND for both of these booleans. So both of those need to be true. The distance has to be big enough and the hit must be successful. And we're going to do the same thing for the other one as well. We're going to grab the right foot distance. We're going to check if the distance is smaller or equal, again, to 30 units. And we're going to do a AND to make sure both of those conditions are true. And if they are true, well, only then we are allowed to uh, align our feet with the slope. And there we go. Now it's a lot better. There's still a little bit of that snapping in it. We can see it happening actually, but uh, in actual game, nobody really should and will notice that and nobody will really care about it. But if you are really like picky at it and you want to make it like super, super realistic, you can always apply the accumulated lerp just like we did for uh, the alignment of the feet and the pelvis. But everything other than that, as you can see, it is aligning itself with these surfaces nicely. So our fit, foot, foot are now planted on the ground the way they should be. And yeah, about the lerp. So just like previously, we do the same, basically the same logic except for the float. It's a rotational one. So you could grab your rotations and do a accumulated lerp, right? And again, the same value, make sure you store it apply the initial value, give it some blend time, obviously make it small, otherwise it's going to look odd for, for the rotation of the, the, the ankle itself. Um, but yeah, that's about it. So that's going to be it for today's episode. Hope you found this useful. And uh, yeah, time to head into some ARM IKs.